So Sam, we're keen to focus on one of the five ways to well-being as a bit of a theme for our conversation today, particularly that the theme of learning. You know, that's one of the things that if you invest in that in your life, uh, it's really good for your well-being. So you mentioned in the last interview that you've been doing a coaching course. Yeah, how's that all been going? Yeah, the coaching course has been great. It's um, definitely challenged me from being on the, the player side to then obviously um, understanding what the coaches are, are trying to do. and um, for me, being a, a senior player, I'm obviously trying to upskill myself, but also hopefully pass on some some knowledge to, to uh, other players as well. So, working out how people learn, um, whether it's learning through discovery, so you've just got to let them go and let them make the mistakes, versus trying to um, show them, tell them, um, and working out how you like learning and where your best retention is. It's been interesting and opened a few few different doors and yeah, I've enjoyed something a little bit different compared to just trying to play and, and train. So interesting, you talk about those different learning styles. How would you describe your learning style? I think my learning style, uh, looking at the rugby field, I like getting in there and doing it, um, walking through things, seeing the pitches and that, but on the farm, um, and you know, everyday life. It's actually having someone show me and then trying myself. Uh, but you've got to make a few mistakes, like uh, fencing, for example, the last couple of weeks, been trying to fix a few holes in fences and stuff like that and definitely made a few few mistakes and created a few more issues. But um, <laughs> without having a go, yeah. I'm never going to learn. So that's yeah. uh, one way that I've um, adjusted to it. When you've talked about that coaching, when I was listening to you describe that, you could talk just the same way about leadership style around, you know, in a team. So I'm interested you just to talk about what you've learned around being a leader, particularly in sport situations that you think you, you'll be able to take back into farming. You know, some, sometimes the best form of leadership is actually listening um, versus, versus telling or showing. So I think it's been able to, I think BJ Lahore said it, um, the way um, he tried to be an all-black captain was he worked out who needed a carrot or a cuddle, and uh, who needed a kick up the backside or a stick. So mm. um, that was a great piece of advice I heard. And, and from that, I've taken that into my everyday life. Um, some people need um, encouragement, um, whether it's just you know talking away and saying you're doing a good job and, and then at the end saying maybe this could be a way to improve it. Versus people that want it direct, they just want to know how to get better and what they've got to do and they don't want any of the, the small talk around it. So um, it's working out who wants what and, and how they want it to be delivered. And, and that's probably the, the art, of, art of leadership and also the art of, of coaching or, or farming if you're working in and around a, a lot of staff. So that it's really about being aware of the needs of the team and actually what's the, the best style that's going to bring the best out on them to help with their performance um, everyone kind of knows what they like and sometimes it's just actually asking us hey how do you want me to, me to talk to you or what, what do you want rather than saying what you think they want to hear so ask them the question and they'll give you a pretty honest answer in the in the long run actually it's very interesting in this um space as well i just listened to a webinar this morning from a Corrigan Soman, who's a Nuffield scholar. So he's a dairy farmer from down south. Yeah. He thought that he was looking for a technical solution to the, ch the big challenges in farming. And actually where he's really landed is actually the solutions are around how we deal with pressure yeah. and actually how we, how we think about it. Well, what are some of the things that you've learned that, uh, that you'll take from your sport into farming to help you deal with some of those pressures? I've got a wee smile on my face because I, I can... I can picture my father and he'll be nodding his head away and, and saying I'm saying all the right things, but then I'm also laughing because the old sayings are, are there for a reason. Um, control the controllables. Obviously, you can't control the weather, um, rain, too much rain, not enough, wind, snow, etc. And then same with the, the payout, whether it's a dairy payout, the land price, beef price, wool price, whatever. Um, you've got to be able to roll with the punches to a point. I think all those things, it comes back to what can you have an influence on and, and how can you do it positively. Um, there's nothing worse than 
always looking at the negatives in something. Um, the easiest way to turn around is, right, what's the positive? What's the opportunity here to to change something? Whether it's uh, changing a fence line so stock don't get caught in the corner or a new water system, um, how you operate as, as a team with staff. There's, there's so many opportunities and opportunities to grow in, in farming. Um, and I know this, this is what I'm looking forward to about farming is I'm going to enter back in at the bottom of the, of the chain and have to work my way to the top. Hopefully I've got a bit of time to, to do that, but that, that's one thing that excites me and there's always an opportunity to get better.